Oh. <laughs> what a surprise, Looper. Welcome fellow folders to episode 10, I think, of How to Get Better at Origami. We're going to be looking at photography. I'm your host, Foolish Foolish, and we are again going to be looking at photography, mainly the, my style and how I do it. So what I use is, if you don't already know, is a light box. Um, the light box came with three background colours. It was white, black, uh, black, white, black and beige. I only use white, but you can easily cut a piece of paper of a different colour and then use that. But anyway, first of all, this is basically what it looks like. Your light box. And you can buy these on Amazon, you can buy them on eBay, and camera stores, Jessops, you can get them literally anywhere. This is from Amazon. It's the medium size. Now I wish that I would I I wish I got the bigger size, it would have come in more handy. I may end up just getting it because you never know, uh, why not? But anyway, this is what it's like. And uh, these are super useful as well, which I'll explain in just a minute. So the first part is just going to be uh, setting up. And this is the white one as well. So again, they come in three of these, the white, black and the beige, which I've never had to use before. So your cables, and it's simple enough to set up. I need to unplug one of those lights so I can plug this in. So it's your power supply, your plug, and then these two little ends which get plugged into the back, I will show in just a minute, so let's put these to one side. And it's what's also cool is, even though it's, it's super compact, so it's flat foldable, um, it's easy to store, you can slide this in anywhere, you don't need to keep it built up, uh, I don't necessarily keep it built up, I don't use it that much to not have to put it back. So I'll quickly, I'll quickly set this up. Um, I won't talk because it's quite noisy with all the Velcro sticking. And then you can see how um, large it is. Well, this is basically the size. Near enough the film table. Let's get rid of this. So this is the basic size of the light box. Um, let's measure it, I'm not sure. I can't remember what size it is. So let's just... It's a square anyway, so it's going to be the same. All over. There it is. 44 centimetres, approximately. And I think the bigger one is about 66 centimetres. So it just depends. If you have big models, will you be able to fit them in here? And do you really want to use a light box for big models? Again, it's entirely up to you. So to set it up, we have the sides, the top with the light sources. We have two sets of them. Uh, these already come, but you don't need to attach this in any way. Oh yeah, I forgot that bit as well. So it is even bigger. So setting up is Fairly straightforward. I'm going to bring the sides up and then fold over. Then one side at a time. Just stick the Velcro to the sides. Just turn around this way. And it's important that you seal all the sides because you want to try and keep as much natural light in as possible. That way you get it more brighter. And I'll turn it this way. Now what I do is just fold it down. Right, I'll show. I'll put the white background in. I'll put 
put this in so it's easier to see what I'm doing. But we have two Velcro parts here. Okay, I'm shaking, man. I need to get a new tripod. This is so annoying. Anyway, we have Velcro here and Velcro here. And on the light box, you can see that on the train. See, yeah, you can see that we have the opposite Velcro here and here. So these two edges get attached. Like that. So they're now, let's tuck these in because it's going to get stick. So these get attached and we'll lift this back up. Now we're going to push down and then fold over. Now there's a little, basically, edge here which we tuck the white under like that. We can now do exactly what we did to the sides here. So one side at a time. One. Let's just push it down first. And there is two. And then you would just you would push down uh, the bottom of the white part so it lies nice and flat. And then, last but least. Fold this up. I normally do the top first. And then you, you have an extra part here. So there's extra material. So you can push that in and tuck it. So one side has done, you flip it over. And then the same here. Just Tight as possible, stick it together like that. And there we go, I'm super happy. One completely sealed light box, ready to go. Now, for the cable parts I was talking about, these little, I can't really see it, right here. I'm gonna bring the camera up a wee bit. Right, it's at an angle, but you can see it better for now. There's no right or wrong, which one goes into which. Um, there's no indication, you just plug one into the other, like that, like that. Then you would go and plug in your plug, which I will do off camera because I need to change the lights about because the plug's getting used, so I'll be right back. Now we have the light box set up, it's connected to the power, both lights are still on and this is plugged in as well. Loper's just in, I don't think he knows this is here because he always manages to get inside this, so don't be surprised if he jumps in any minute. So I'll lift this up, try and put something heavy on top of it to hold it. Um, shoes are cool. So you've got two panels that you can open up, this one and this one. Again we have our inside of the light box. And then to turn it on, it's already plugged in, we have this little like button here that you just turn. And then when you hear it click, the power goes on, it starts to light, uh, light up. And of course you can decide how, how bright you want it. I will go a certain brightness, or a max brightness, but I won't go any brighter than that. So that's as bright as it goes. And then you can see the lights on top 
mean it's super cool from this angle. Really neat. And this is basically what the light box looks like inside. Oh, here comes a bell. Oh. <laughs> what a surprise, Looper. Hey, you, what are you doing? Looper, you're ruining my video. I'm trying to show people how to use this, but you're, you're scratching it everywhere. Yeah, you naughty boy. Oh! <laughs> he just hit the camera. He just hit the camera. Now it's clean, so we can continue. Now what I normally do is I swap to my macro lens. This is the lens I basically always use for photography because it has a minimal focus point which allows you to get super close to the model and again the quality is amazing on this little fella. So I'm going to swap over to this, I'm going to pick a model to try and take pictures of. Uh, I need the pictures to finish off the video so hopefully we can do that. Right, so this is what we have. We have macro lens on, attached, ready to go. Um, shooting on the new Sony a7 III, just for this part because it's easier. Now, now that I've got two cameras, I can um, do things like this to try and obviously help show more cooler angles. So, yeah, so this should be a good enough angle. Anyway, for taking pictures inside the light box, I tend to shoot on uh, manual. I mean, I'll give some examples in a minute, but it's easier this way, so you can adjust the settings. I mean, the shutter speed, aperture, you can change these. Um, fully adjustable, you're in full control, and you can match the brightness of the light box to help try and get that picture perfect uh, white background. So manual is always super trust, trustworthy to use. I don't I mean you could use like your intelligent auto or superior auto, but the colours tend to come out darker. Um, you want you want to try for me I want to try and get as clean as white as possible without any editing whatsoever. So nine out of ten times I will get a really good white background and then I will just slightly adjust uh, the background and the pictures when I edit them so I'll just increase the white balance and then a touch of contrast that's it because I don't want to play about with um, the image too much in case I ruin it in a sense so yeah camera's gonna die but I'm not recording on this one anyway so yeah that's basically the setup I shoot in manual so let's go back to that Go to change the battery and then we will continue. We're going to try and take pictures of the super cute little dino. I can't remember uh, the designer's name, I'll have it on the screen because I always forget. So we have the model in there and I'm, I'm not, I've never done this obviously angle before so hopefully uh, I can show it pretty good and I'll, of course I'll learn from this. So let's try and get a nice angle. I think we're fine here. We need to zoom in on this screen. Maybe, I'm not entirely sure. But first thing I do is, once the model is in screen, I mean that looks, oops, we're too high. Too high, I need to bring this down. Like that, so I'm gonna try and show the camera screen as well. Yes, and focus, so. Um, first thing I do is just play about with the settings because we're in manual. We're just going to adjust it. I want to try and get a nice white. So you're just going to play about with the, the settings. Of course, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I'm not a photography channel and you'll get all the information from them much better than me. 
So it doesn't need to be too white. I'll try this. So one F14 and one 80th. And then, I mean, that looks pretty good to me. I mean, I, I really like that. And I can easily enhance the whiteness around it when I edit the picture. Because when I edit, I will only increase the whiteness, a touch of contrast, and then add my logo somewhere on the screen. Bring it closer. And then it's just a matter of, I would, I would normally take about 50 pictures. So maybe like five from the front, even change the settings if you want it more. I'll keep it at this. If I go too high, then I may go too white. Right, let's bring the camera down a wee bit more. And I can bring this up. Hopefully, we can fully see the screen. And it's just a matter of, depending on what type of pictures you want to take, you can keep it in frame, um, you can hold it, so just hold it like that, take a picture, and it's, again it's entirely up to you. Now the cool thing about having the macro lens is, you get super high quality pictures, and at the same time you can go in really close. If you've noticed in previous videos for my official folds, you will see that I go in extremely close to the model, still in picture perfect focus. That's all because of the macro lens. It allows you to get ultra close to the model and stay in precise, uh, precise focus, which is super handy. So let me just show an example. So I've hit record. In fact, I want to do it in manual. I'll do it in video. No wait, I'll do it in manual actually. And then I'm just going to try and see how close I can get. Again, it's quite hard to see because I've got a camera in my face. But when you use a macro lens, you just decide how, f how close you can get and then you can just readjust it. If it's not in focus, come back a tiny bit. So let's see how this works. Oh yeah, it's because the frame's too high. That's still 100. So it has to be double the, your frame rate. Let's try again. Let's see how close I can get. And again, you press the shutter button as well if it's not in focus to get it in focus. I mean, it's quite hard to see. Um, I can play the video at the side as well, like one half showing this and the other half showing the footage there as well. So that's tend to, that's what I tend to do after the pictures, take some videos to show it all in more detail. So I'm going to try and take some pictures, more pictures, and then we'll get to editing them. And I just want to try and show all the model. So I'm just going to go in nice and close. Put it further back. I'll bring this closer so I don't need to stretch as much. And like a lower angle. And I can't really see because this is in the way. Probably better from the side. 
That looks good. Try another one from there. Yeah, that looks really nice. You don't need to get, it's good to have maybe a few in full frame to show the the general full shape of the model and then have ones that are nice and close and cool angles like this. You can even do one like that. I mean, that's pretty neat as well. And then, I've already done that, so maybe show the back. And maybe the side. So that's basically the process. I will take some more pictures, make sure I've got some good ones, and then I'll sh I'll basically show you what I do to edit them. Now I have taken all the pictures. I took let me see, 49 pictures. Now the model isn't superly detailed, so I don't really need that much. Instagram only allows you to post 10 pictures, so I always go with 10, uh, Twitter allows you to post 4, Facebook I think you can post as many as you want, um, even if, you're, if you have your own website, your own blog page, uh, whatever, so go with 10, that's what I normally do, so now I have the pictures and two folders, one is called not using, so any pictures I don't use I will drag into there, and I have uh, a folder called top 10, the 10 pictures that I will use, I'll drag in there, and then I've got top 10 edited. So once I edit the top 10, um, I'll drag those edited ones in there, and then those are the ones I will post to my pages. So this part is just going to be a time lapse of me deciding which pictures to use. I've decided on the top 10, but 9 out of 10 times I'll have more than 10, I might like 15. So now I need to bring it down to 10 and we have 13, so I need to get rid of 3 pictures. And normally I will try and get rid of the ones that are quite similar. And from the looks we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 full body shots. So I need to get rid of 3 of them. Uh, 2 are looking to the left. Two are looking to the right, no four are looking to the left, so I think I like this one because it's got that nice bit of black at the bottom because of the light box. I've got that in frame as well. No, I think I'll get rid of that one actually. Get rid of that one. So let's drag this back to the original folder. We need to get rid of two more. Maybe this one, but I'm not too sure in the lighting. Get rid of that one. And one of these body shots, that's a close up one maybe. Oh that's nice, I like that one. Uh, I can see more of the tail on this. Um, the colours are better than this one originally. This is quite darker. Okay, I'm gonna go with this one. So get rid of that first one. Go back here, drag these three into not using. Now we have the top ten. And we have 10. So first of all, what I'm going to do is pick one. Uh, let me see which one should I use first. This one's already really white, so we don't need to touch that up too much. Yeah, let's go with this one. So I'm going to edit the picture now. Uh, I've already got the, my program opened up. Let me drag it in. And here we go. So it's already it's quite bright. Now I'm just going to go 
This is on GIMP uh, 2.8, so it's colours, shadows and highlights, and then the white point adjustment increases the white balance. So I was like that, that's how you drag up full. That's maybe may may not need to do it too much. So even like that, that's perfect. I like that. Then I'm just gonna go colours, curves, and drag it down to bring the contrast down. And that's it. No more. I'm not touching it anymore, I don't want to mess about with it, I want to keep the picture as real as possible. Um, now I just need to bring in my watermark. And pop it somewhere that isn't on the picture, like I'm not going to put it right on the head. Um, again, that's something else you can do. You can put your name or something very faint here in case someone decides to like cut this watermark out and repost the picture, try to claim it as their own. Uh, that's happened to a friend of mine who, did, who made an origami meme. Uh, it got hella reposted, it went viral, but he never had a watermark on it, so it's hard to, it's better to do that in case something like that happens. Like, add your name, like, I could put Fearless here and just make it really faint, or Fearless Flourish, whatever. Um, but yeah, once I've done that, I'm just going to export it, and I'll just do it to this folder, and I'll just call it number one. One dot PNG because I think PNG files aren't compressed. Well, JPEGs are, so the quality the quality is less. Though, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not entirely sure, but that's what I read. And then just enter. And because these are big pictures, they take uh, longer than usual to export. And that's basically the process. I will do that for the next nine pictures, and then that is basically it. Uh, I'll have a comparison to see if you can spot any difference from this picture to the, the normal one and then you can judge yourself, see what you think of it, see what you like, see what you don't and hopefully you'll learn from this, this is the process that I do and what I forgot to mention was uh, earlier when I was recording the light box part light boxes are fantastic to show the natural detail in the model it's really good because you have the perfect white light and it shows the model naturally as how it should be I think it's a good idea which I might do is take the pictures in the light box show all the detail that's in it and then take the pictures of the model and uh, some scenery which doesn't focus fully on the detail but captures it more in its natural element. So pictures in the light box and then pictures in its natural habitat you could say for an, for an animal and that would be a cool thing to do. I might start doing that uh, just for the sake of it. It would be cool as well. Anyway that is the end of the video. I uh, hope you liked it, hope you enjoyed it oh, and hope you learned from it. So thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.